Everybody, welcome to a very special Read It Again bookstore. In, in, we're talking to a band. Wait, it's over here. They're really cool. <laughs> okay, so this is the bookshop band. They're based out of Scotland now. They're from originally from England, from Mr. B's Emporium. What was it? Mr. B. Reading Delight. Reading Delight. I love that name. And we were just talking that I've actually been there. I was there about eight years ago because if I see a bookstore, I have to stop in. Do the booksellers um, spend their holidays going to visit other yes. bookshops? Yeah. Yes, yeah. totally. And my yeah. husband's in the book industry too, but he doesn't work here. He does POS systems, point of sale systems for bookstores. So it's great because uh, we don't work together, but we're in the same industry. And I'm constantly dragging him to bookstores and he doesn't mind because, you know, maybe if we visit like seven, we can write it off for a tax deduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Choose some countries with the really good bookshops in. Oh. And, uh, yeah. There's several. There's a really good. There's one in Scotland I want to go to. That's in a um, uh, an old train depot. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm, well, there's it's one. In, I know one in uh, Annick in just south of the border. Mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Uh, what is it called? Uh, Don't point at me. But it's got an amazing. It is. In, it's in an old train station, and it has like a little um, yeah. train station in the ceiling. So you look above it, and they've sort of suspended a, a, a steam train. Begins with a B, I think. Barter books. Barter books. There we go. Barter books. Yeah, I, I watched a, a documentary on them and I wrote them an email. They, you know, they didn't respond. It's okay, but I wanted to know that I love them from afar because of the documentary. <laughs> Okay, let me introduce you guys. Uh, the Bookshop Band, the offspring of an artistic love affair between a duo of English folk singers, songwriters, and a multi-award winning independent bookshop in the UK, Mr. B's Emporium of Reading Delights. They write and perform songs inspired by books, inspired by hundreds of authors from Shakespeare to Philip Pullman, and have released 13 studio al albums featuring many of the authors they have worked with. So, thanks guys. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having okay. us. Okay. All right. We're quite a good intro for ourselves. There. That's quite good. Well, okay. Quick question for you. Uh, before yeah. we start, how do you how do you pick a book? How do we pick a book? Well. Well, most of the books that we've written, songs inspired by, have actually come through Mr. B. So when they've been going to do an author event, they'll tell us about it, and then they'll send us a book and say you have to come and write a song, <laughs> write a song and come and play it um, just before the author talks at an event. And then since doing that, we've had um, a few other kind of commissions outside of that for book festivals or authors. But actually, generally, we don't choose the books, which is okay. kind of good because it means that we're exposed to all these books that we'd never read if we chose, if we if we did have the choice, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I want I want to hear about that more. Why don't we go ahead and start? If you guys want to switch to the screen, just just let me know and I'll come back up. Okay. Cool. We'll just we'll play a song to start off, uh, which is um, it's not actually a song inspired by a book. It's inspired by our experiences of playing in lots and lots of bookshops all around uh, the country. And actually, when we wrote this one, we just done a, a couple of tours around the UK, playing in bookshops and meeting all the wonderful people who who run them and curate them and, and uh, work in them. And uh, so we wrote it. We actually wrote it for um, uh, Independent Bookshop Week um, in the UK. Um, and uh, yeah, it's called A Shop With Books In. We tried to write a song about bookshops without the word bookshops in, which is a bit silly, maybe, but here we go. Lucky 
I know there's Aww. other people clapping. It's just, but you can only see and hear me. Oh, that's <laughs> I <amazing>. love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, so, you know, we've been doing all these online concerts yeah. and it's just been silence after everything for the last four months. So that's really nice. That's, I'm, that's I'm sorry. Here. Our, that's one of our <laughs> first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For you guys tuning in, this is the Bookshop Band. Thank you for joining us. They're um, joining us from Scotland. That is so freaking cool. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about how, how do you write your songs based on books? How do we write our songs yeah. based on books? Um, do you read it? You What do you do? So uh, I guess the, the, the honest answer to that is we don't really know. Like there's no formula that we employ anyway. Um, the closest we get to a formula is like just blind panic because what we do is Mr. Bees will give us the book um, and we'll generally get one copy of the book and we're re both pretty slow readers so we'll, we'll maybe get the book a couple of weeks in advance and we'll read the book and I'll finish it and then Beth will read it and then basically we'll, we'll kind of finish the book on the morning of the event that's kind of how it works and then we have a day 
where we get together and we panic write a couple of songs inspired by that book and and it's it's really in, it's an interesting process because you know that at seven o'clock that evening when the author is sat in front of you expecting to hear this song that you've or these songs two songs that you've written inspired by their book um those songs don't exist yet but they have to exist by then and in theory you know that you know if a song is three and a half minutes you could write a song in three and a half minutes so like every minute past that is a bonus i don't think i could write a song in that no time. <laughs> but like but like you know that like in 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 principle you know like if you just go okay i've just got to do it um so you've got a day to write a couple of songs and and if we've just literally finished the book which is kind of the ideal scenario to be in then we'll just the first thing that comes to our head so we'll probably if we both read it we'll break off and go into different rooms probably for 20 minutes or half an hour and we'll just just the first thing that comes to your head the thing that you remember about that book the thing that and it could be a really random thing or it could be like, you know, the general thing or the cover or a particular character or a scene or an emotion or something it reminded you about in your own life. And you thought about that while you were reading that or whatever it is. And you've just got to run with it. You just run with it. You just um, and in terms of the process, I don't think there is a plan. Like, I guess I might I probably play play a bit of music first. I might come up with a little riff. Um, and then I'll probably play that riff for 19 of those 20 minutes and and <laughs> and then um, but then we, yeah we're kind of just just um, yeah just just play just play with it and see what comes out and it's quite nice having that really short amount of time to, to do it because you, you don't have time to second guess yourself or um, you know wonder if it's any good or the right thing to do or the right approach to take you just you get something and you just run with it and so creatively it's really exciting and a lot more freeing than a lot of other projects um but beth what about your do you have a particular process probably not a process either I, I i quite like that just waiting you know reading the book and then it's so fresh when you finished it that you're you're still in it you're still part of the story and i think like ben said that's probably quite an ideal time because when you let time pass you're gradually moving away from the book and it's not so fresh and you don't have those kind of connections mm -hmm. or emotions. Mm. Um, but sometimes it could be even like, what instrument does that draw, and what instrument am I drawn to to start writing that song? You know, is it a cello or ukulele or guitar or, mm -hmm. you know, some, some other sounds that might, I don't know, just kind of evoke something from there. So mm -hmm. that could be... It, and I, I mean, I never used to write songs at all. And then um, this has been a great project for songwriting because we've had mm -hmm. to write so many songs. And also just having, I think, having the deadline, having some inspiration. Um, and I noticed somebody just asked if yeah. we'd, if, if we, what is it? Have you ever been something that you thought, wow, I just can't come up with anything for this book? It's a really interesting question. Uh, what are you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, anything can just prompt like some kind of you know even if i mean luckily we are the the kind of curation of the books has been really good because it's come from mostly from booksellers, booksellers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and so most of the books have been really really good um and so there haven't really been any duck books have there but no. i think even if you don't think i mean especially with the pressure you think ah i'm not gonna get something but we always do get something and i guess we have each other to mm. to bounce ideas off there's so i mean there's so much in a book if you think think that it might take eight ten sixteen hours to read a book i mean that is just there's so many images and stories and paths mm -hmm. that that every book take you on and it's, it's it's impossible to not get a song out i don't think and, you know and the same book if everyone in the whole world read one book you know, there'd be six billion different songs inspired, you know, and they all wrote a song or yeah. responded. There'd be six billion different responses or nine billion or I've lost count. Um, yeah. uh, but do you know what I mean? It's like everyone, every the, the, what we do with the book is, is in no way like the official song or the mm -hmm. right song. It's, it's just not a retelling. It's, it's just, just our whatever. responses to that book as a reader. And, and that's very much informed by, you know, our own personalities and the lives we've lived and and 
and what we read into that book and and if you wrote a song it would be completely different but just as valid as anything that we do it would probably um, sound like row 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 your boat <laughs> But I, th I but think, I think yeah. having the pressure, I think sometimes we've maybe felt the pressure of especially the, the more famous authors, perhaps. And that's maybe just added that extra mm. layer of ah, what if we don't write the right thing or something, you know, yeah. it, it, but uh, especially I mean, with Mr. B's, um, it's quite often been authors that we hadn't heard of that have been <laughs> up and coming. And we felt the pressure of writing the songs. And we still got really nervous and it's a tiny little space to play mm. in and had mm. to, audience on our knees and the author just there. So we, we felt nervous about it. But perhaps didn't feel so much pressure to interpret the book mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm. But having said that, we have had maybe a couple of occasions where maybe somebody's expected a slightly different song <laughs> from <laughs> it um, based on our previous songs. And, mm -hmm. and But, you know, that's, that's those are one-offs, really. Yeah. Well, one of the interesting things about writing a song inspired by a book from a songwriter's point of view is that you've just inhabited this this world this life this story that is not your own and quite often as songwriters you know just out loose in the world you're kind of writing songs about your own life and mm -hmm. whether that's interesting or not is another question um depends on your life i guess and um but when you read a book you you've you've experienced this other story and so it's really interesting as songwriters to be able to write from an emotive place because you know books are emotive things you come out of a book and you have an emotion about it you mm -hmm. have millions of emotions while you're reading it which is the same thing that i you know ideally you do as a songwriter when you're writing about your own life but you've had this unique wonderful opportunity to be emotional about this life that you've never had and mm -hmm. that you've experienced through this book and so you end up writing songs about themes and topics and places and characters and stories that you could have never written about had you not you know just put that book down and being transported to to a different different place um yeah it's, it's great we we love it well why don't why don't we hear one why don't we hear okay yeah uh, uh what are you gonna do okay let's do um i should go so behind us here we've been doing a a lockdown book show and um got lots yeah. of books on. i'm gonna go and uh, pull yeah. one out of the uh yeah. the and i am putting a link in the comments comments where you can when is when is your uh your lockdown show how often when is it well it's on friday nights um and we've done tomorrow night will have been our will be our 20th wow. lockdown book show and we haven't really told our viewers yet but the following one will be the last one for now because we're going to take mm -hmm. a little break so next tomorrow at Hour eight thirty, which is what for you? Three thirty. Three thirty. Yeah. So, some, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the afternoon. Yeah. Um, and and next Friday as well, we'll yeah. be doing them. But you can catch them, or you can look at the bookshop band Facebook, or um, got some of them on YouTube as well. So you yeah, can catch, I'll you can have a look there. there. Okay, so, so I pick this book. This is the Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry oh, by yeah. Rachel Joyce, um, and it's it was published. I think about six years ago now. It's probably one of the ones that we, well, it's from Mr. B's, where we didn't really know, we didn't know who Rachel was at that point. But No. I think, was it her first book? It might have been her first book. She'd written lots of plays. Um, she was a playwright and an actress before, um, and still is. Um, but, so this is, it's a lovely book, and it it starts off with this guy, Harold, who receives a letter from an old work colleague of his, unfortunately saying that she is in the process of passing away and she's writing to say goodbye. And Harold writes a letter back to her saying, sorry to hear you're dying, lots of love Harold. It's a lot better written in the book. And goes to post it in his local post box. But as he reaches in with this letter, he realises that it's not enough effort for this old friend of his. And so as a gesture, he walks one post box further um, and so begins a story and a journey. But there's a really, really... A, the thing that I remembered when I put this book down was this moment in the book where Harold was a young man uh, at this point, and it's the night on which he meets his wife, Maureen, for the first time. And he's dancing in a bar, he's having a really lovely time, 
Um, and Maureen is sitting there and looks over and sees this idiot dancing on the dance floor and is quite intrigued by him and watches him dance. And Harold notices Maureen watching him but doesn't worry too much about it and carries on dancing the fool. Um, but at the end of the night, they start talking. One thing leads to another, and so begins another sort of thread in the story. Um, but the thing I thought when I put the book down was like, if you knew that was the moment in your life when you met your wife to be, there's absolutely no way I would have carried on dancing like an idiot on the dance floor. I would have stopped and sorted out my hair, propped myself up at the bar, tried to look cool, thought of something witty to say, and it would have been a complete and utter disaster. Um, so this song is inspired by that, and it's called How Not to Woo a Woman. <laughs> okay. It was on that fateful day you saw me dancing in the bar Your eyes caught mine and so I came and whispered in your ear I hadn't thought of what to say or what you seemed to me But it seemed to go pretty well and we left early Move on now seven months and we were married by the shore The two of us together we never wanted more I'll get a job to feed us and a home to keep us warm And in a year or so I think our children will be born So onwards seven years and our little boy's five I used to think I'd save him but at least he's still alive We'll have our ups and downs but I know our love will win So I never leave this journey not even at the end As I am dancing in the bar A little overthinking And perhaps a stage too far I'll just enjoy the moment anymore And I would be Too scared to dance like a fool And you'd never see me Woo! <laughs> Thank you! Thank so you. I, had, I had a question here um let's see here what has anybody ever not liked their song any authors i no no i th i think um gener generally speaking the 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 response has always been that they they love it um very very occasionally we might we might have been asked to change a couple of like like a few words mm -hmm. if, if they felt that that um once really once that happened <laughs> um yeah which it, which in 200 songs is pretty yeah pretty and actually good. to start with the authors didn't sometimes didn't even know they were going to get a song yeah let alone two songs so i think they were just really like surprised and maybe sometimes a bit overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the emotion of having someone respond to their book yeah. which is really nice for us as well like it you know in terms of yeah. connecting with them and yeah, we've mostly been really, really lovely experiences. Um, quite intense, but really good. Yeah, because I think I think uh, well for all of us, like you know, having anyone respond creatively to something that you've done yourself mm -hmm. and is 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 such an honour. So regardless of whether they like the songs or not, you know, we kind of ride off that. It's like oh, you've done something inspired by my book. <laughs> um, 
And so that's really cool. And a, quite a, a comment we've had a few times, more than once, is like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. You know, that, that was a different one, but, but not in a bad way. And it goes back to the, the comment about, like, you know, the songs that come out are our very personal responses to that. So they're not, they're not kind of... But what's interesting, actually, sometimes... Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, you know, we do have this very personal response to this book, you know, with this particular little theme that we picked out that we felt really hit mm -hmm. us personally. And we play the song to the author and the author kind of is going, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one. That's, that's what I was going for. That's, that's what I wanted you to feel. And I was like, what? We've been manipulated by the author and we thought it was our own sort of, you know. So that, that has happened as well a couple of times. Yeah, and there have been, been some tears, but usually tears of just of that you know overwhelm <laughs> yeah. yeah okay so, so what's next what's hmm. next Ooh, well i mean we would if if our plans were as we were planning last year we would right now be in america touring mm -hmm. um we we um yeah so we would have and we had i don't know we we did this um three week tour uh last year which was you know well i guess we'll say more about that in a minute but we were like okay next time let's make it a tour and we'll we'll tour every state in america and uh, we'll play in loads of bookshops and we'll write a book about all the bookshops we go to and and like someone's like do you know how big america is and mm -hmm. how long that would take and we're like oh it's not that big is it it's like mm -hmm. we could do that anyway so that's where our ambition was going um and we probably wouldn't have pulled that off um I don't know. I, I, think could, I think you could have done it in six months. You, you get an RV uh, yeah, camper, yeah. and then you just you do it. Yeah. Well, may not was hit, like every major city, but <laughs> yeah. Well, that was our attitude. We were like, right, we're going to do this, and obviously, um, uh, with with COVID, uh, mm -hmm. that's not happening. Um, we did. We did actually. We were going to start the tour um, in January uh, in New Orleans at a, a folk. Mm -hmm folk alliance uh, music conference there and we actually that still happened so we still went to new orleans at the end of january so we feel like this year when no one's really been traveling we did get to new orleans and we spent mm -hmm. a week in new orleans which was amazing but then we came home yeah. Uh, yeah and i guess our plan was to to try and kind of do as much touring as we could before molly who's our daughter went to nursery or school um oh, so yeah. We had, we had limited time, but you yeah. know, was it was my. Still and she work. actually went to nursery, let's say for the first time this this week. Oh, no, yeah, last yeah, Friday. Last Friday, so um, yeah, so that boat has <laughs> sailed, um, <laughs> to say. But no, we do, we do, we do really, really. We are planning on coming back, but we were hoping to be um, right now touring and promoting the album that we recorded uh, last year. So let's hear one more song, and then we'll talk about the album. No. Cool. Uh, what's next? We, we haven't what's planned next? anything. We're just going to see <laughs> well, see what's next. I mean, either. Great. Fun. It's fun. Do that. We could do um, Edge of the World, or is that too... Edge of the World? Can we do that? Yeah, let's do Edge of the World. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 You sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might have just sprung that on Ben a bit. It's cool. I've um, only got two notes. So we'll we'll sing a song inspired by a book by um, a friend of ours, actually, someone we did know and who would have known that we would have gone to write some songs. And she's called Emma Hooper, um, Canadian who lives in Bath, knows Mr. Bees very well. And she wrote a book called Etta and Otto and Russell and James, which is a wonderful book, right way up, um, about a woman. In a way, it's kind of got similarities to the last one we did with the unlikely pil pilgrimage of Harold Fry. And actually when Emma saw Rachel Joyce's book she said oh no that's exactly that's kind of what my book's about or it's a it's a journey book like that and having read both of them um, I'd say they're very very different um, even though they do involve a journey by foot by different characters in the book um, and this is in this case it's Etta who is in her 80s and she decides that she wants to go and see the sea before she forgets that that's what she wants to do and so she leaves a note for her husband, Otto, and sets off on foot to see if she can find the sea. And she lives in a very landlocked part of Canada, so it's not an easy thing to do. But she's just started to lose her memory. Um, and the story goes back to when Etta and Otto are younger, 
and it's just set just before the Second World War, this part. And Otto is actually called up to go and fight in the war with um, his brothers from the farm. And Etta stays um, in, the er in the area and she starts working at the school and helping out there. And they start writing letters to each other, only having just only really just met, but they start writing letters and develop their relationship. And Otto writes home about his adventures in and around the sea um, and in his kind of effort in the war. And Etta um, writes letters back and corrects him on his grammar and things like that. So this kind of develops. But when we were writing the song, um, we also knew Emma had done some research into Alzheimer's and dementia and came across a book that we had come across called The Edges of Everywhere, which is a beautiful poetry book put together by um, the Peggy Dodd Centre, which is an Alzheimer's Day centre in Bath. And um, this creative writer came in to work with the patients there and got them writing poetry and got them to kind of tell their stories through poetry. And some of the carers did the same. So you get this really beautiful collection, sometimes slightly disjointed and sometimes... Um, you know, this kind of flow of words is not what you expect, but it makes it very beautiful and, and quite a moving book. So the song we're going to sing is inspired a bit by that as well, and it's called Edge of the World. Thank you. <clears throat> This lady, this crazy lady, she's all right. She's all right. This woman, she chose to make this journey. Okay. 
guys that was so good oh, oh, in fact i just she's gonna kill me i just got a text from one of my friends who's watching and she said she's sitting at her desk crying oh. <laughs> sorry oh, she's okay. no it's a good thing she probably needed it <laughs> secretly okay. we're like yeah. yeah so let's talk about your album yay <laughs> yeah okay we're really excited about it um we so this is it this is it this is the vinyl version it's gorgeous um thank you um and it's got yeah it's like a, it's got a double it's got all the pictures uh, wow. lots of the pictures from the tour in there yeah. and oh i've I have the book's fallen out oh we'll get that it's got a little photo booklet on the inside <laughs> so basically um yeah so in august 2018 yeah. um there was a um a, a, a book reviewer from the New York Times came to Wigtown, which is Scotland's book town um, where we live. And he ran a bookshop called The Open Book, which some people might have heard of, which is it's it's on Airbnb. And it and it's uh, it's um, it's it's kind of it's one of the world's most popular Airbnbs. And it's it's where people can pay to come and run a bookshop yeah. for a week. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, this this guy Dwight Garner came and ran the bookshop, but literally for a couple of days. Um, and he came over, and um, the, the irony is, he, uh, so we uh, we all went and had dinner with him the first night, and um, uh, he 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 got lost. So we in fact had dinner with us and and a guy called Sean Bithell who wrote the diary of a bookseller. Um, mm -hmm. who runs a bookshop in Wigtown as well. And so we just had a lovely meal without him. I think we him. had his food, actually. We had <laughs> ate his food. And then at about 11 o'clock at night, he, he turned up and we were like, I'm really sorry, we've just eaten your food. Um, <laughs> so so it was a really bad start. But And we had to go because we, um, we had Molly, our daughter, with us as well. Um, but we we said, oh, do you know, we'll, we'll come by the bookshop in the morning and um, we'll play you a couple of songs, you know, just, just to kind of, you're only here for a day. You know for one night so we'll we'll play a couple of songs and so we did so the next morning we went and we went to the bookshop and he had such a big hangover that morning he ended <laughs> up staying at sean's into the early hours and uh uh and anyway so he was like slumped over there not slumped but he was you know sorry dwight you know um and uh we played him a couple of tunes and it actually went down really well and he loved it and he was it was soothing to his headache mm -hmm. and so 
about a month later when the article came out in the New York Times about his experience there, um, uh, he, he basically he set a challenge to the booksellers of America um, in a very grandiose way, and which was to say that, you know, we should go, if the booksellers of America can't get us over to come and play and tour in bookshops, then you're all doing something wrong. At which point the ABA got in touch, the American Booksellers Association, and said, come and play at our conference. So you're obviously all doing something right. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, so we, we then, um, we were like, okay, well, let's do this. Let's go out to America. Let's do this. Let's turn it into a tour. So we tagged on a week either side of the conference in Albuquerque. And I, I went to the conference. I, I saw yeah. them. First time I saw them play, but they were opening for Margaret Atwood. <laughs> yeah, what a gig. It's seven thirty in the morning. morning. Yeah, it was really early. Yeah, um, and uh, so we tagged on a week either side, um, and we thought, right, this is probably our only opportunity to ever come to America and tour. Um, it's something we've dreamed and talked about, and a lot of people have said, oh, you should get over to America. But as many, you know, the visa process process for a mm -hmm. musician band, you know, going is is really prohibitive, and so. Um, we got this invite from the ABA in September. Sorry, this is a really long story. Oh, I haven't even got to the tour yet. Um, <laughs> so we, we, yeah, we, we, to cut a very long story short, um, we booked the tour for January the next year. And we, we, had, we were so close to not getting the visa. We, we got the visa. It was a real mission. Um, and we you know, filled out all these forms. We had all these testimonial letters. It got sent back to us because there wasn't enough testimonial letters. And then we, we mm. kind of went back. And then, so it was a real hard thing trying to get the visa. And then we went for the interview at the embassy, literally like just before Christmas. So this is like three weeks before we're due to go. Um, and we went to the interview and the lady, lady we, who was interviewing us were like, so what? What, uh, books and uh, songs inspired with books that is so cool have a great time guys bye <laughs> and it's like oh if we just done that was so easy um thank you michael yeah <laughs> and uh and and so but that but we got to this point and we had like three weeks now to make this tour a reality we kind of booked all the gigs um but we hadn't done much in the way of promotion and and the weather was looking really bad like two weeks before no a, a few days two days before we flew out my friend sent me this um this news article that was in for in uh, reuters a reuters news article about the storms hitting america um in, in the next few days and the photo that they used about these the biggest storms of all time uh, was um the tower sin in taos mm -hmm. and which was one of the places we were going to play at so we were like mm -hmm. okay so we just didn't know what this tour was going to be. We thought we'll, we'll get over to America, we'll get through customs, we'll play our first lot of gigs, which is in New York. So we had a week in New York and New Jersey. Um, and then if anything happened beyond that, that was a bonus. Like every, every stage of this tour, it was like, it wasn't going to happen. Okay, we'll do a week and then we'll get stormed out. And, and actually in the end, we, everything just went so smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we started off, we flew out to New Jersey. Um, um, it was a week there and then a week down around Albuquerque mm -hmm. and then a week up in Colorado. Um, and we ended up playing something like 26 concerts in 21 days over those three states. Yeah. Um, well, those, yeah, and four states. And uh, so, so what are some of the highlight bookstores you went to? Your favorites? Not that they're all not all awesome, but the ones they that were really cool. They're also well, it was yeah. it, uh, we had a very welcoming start um, from Little City Books in Hoboken. Mm -hmm. That's what we called, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were staying at Kate, who um, was one of the people who ran that bookshop, staying at her house, and mm -hmm. there she was just so good because we had. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were things like my my cello bridge had had bent beyond recognition and she helped mm -hmm. source a cello that I could play for the time we were there while we got mine fixed and she was just everyone so welcoming and then the bookshop was so great and we had such a lovely audience and I think I mean it just set us up really well for the rest of the tour thinking mm. oh actually people might come to these gigs you know yeah. and then we're not and then realizing that you know even these places in quite big cities or whatever still have quite a local um following or a local um you know, people, community. yeah, community of community. people that come yeah. and, and buy from their bookshops and, yeah. you know, trust them to 
to tell them what books they might want to read and, and that mm. kind of thing. So it, it was really lovely starting off there. Um, you, you can say an, another one. Ben, well, I, so. oh, just, just more on that one. Like I remember yeah. getting there and Kate was like, oh, by the way, I've got a music room you can practice in while you stay. Mm. And we were like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, and and uh, do you know what the really good thing about her house was the lift that t- took all our stuff. Was, I mean, we had a lot of stuff and a baby at the time. So we had cellos and guitars and amps and, um, mm-hmm. you know, just like car seats and push chairs and stuff. And we yeah. had a lot of stuff. And she had they had this little lift with beautiful wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> and this is in her house, not the actual bookshop. Yeah. But that was really helpful for us to, to get our stuff around. Yeah. And then the bookshop was just it's awesome. Amazing. I mean, and that was the thing. We had no idea if anyone was going to turn up. You know, we hadn't played in America before. Um, we'd had very little time to really, like, go, hey, we actually are coming. Um, and and Kate was as well. It's like, guys, it's January. It's darkest January. This is like we don't really do events at this time mm-hmm. of year. And then when they opened the doors, it was absolutely round and people just came in and in and in. And, and that, like Beth said, that set the set the kind of it flipped our kind of apprehension for the tour mm. and we're like okay this is gonna be great we're gonna have a great time and the audiences were wonderful and they were yeah, really good just... I think another one i was thinking of which, which is sadly closed now but was the turn of the corkscrew shop which is a tiny little shop with a uh, kind of cookie and wine bar behind <laughs> the <laughs> shop yeah <laughs> but it was just it, you know the the people that came in, it was such a diverse community and it just made us feel so welcome and like, I don't know, it was just lovely. Yeah, there was uh, barely any space for us to play in that that bookshop. It was like this big L shape of a, mm-hmm. a shop and we were playing at the, the point, the apex of that in sort of two different directions. And the quite often, you know, at Mr. B's, the audience is literally, you know, can be stabbed by Beth's bow at the front of her <laughs> or by a flying string. Not intentionally. No, um, but it was it was pretty much the same in all all the gigs. Like we're used to audiences being right up and and there, which is, I guess, why you know why lockdown has been quite quite tricky for us, but you know, and, and everybody else. But um, like we're so used to audiences being literally right in front of us and a really intimate. Um, intimate kind of performance and 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 even though you're just going through these bookshops you know just briefly just for one day into that community then driving off um it's such an intense the gigs are a really intense thing like you're often staying with the bookshop owner so you're kind of Mm -hmm. you know putting the world to rights either end of the gig and um you're doing that with the audience as well because they're right there and in the gigs are, they're not interactive but they 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 end up being just because mm-hmm. it's about stories and conversations and people will chime in and respond and ask questions and so and, uh, so your your new album is 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 live shows yeah exactly so so yeah. what we did is um we actually got a tiny bit of funding from creative scotland um to uh buy a, a sort of a multi-track recorder that we could take with us on tour and so we managed to do really nice recordings of all the gigs um and on our studio albums like the, all the songs are inspired by books and when we do the gigs we talk about the book each time mm-hmm. before we play the song so that people know what it is but we've never put that onto an album and we thought kind of the nice thing for this one is actually as much as to play the songs and to have the songs on the album it's also to a chance to tell the story so that all the introductions and the uh, the stories behind the songs are also on the album but also just to you know each song is performed and recorded in a different space so we each kind of picked the best of the tour um highlights and um and and you can hear the bookshops and you can hear the audience in them you can hear people you know asking ringing. questions yeah. and responding <laughs> your customers <laughs> Baby's crying. In, Get off, yeah. this is rubbish and um and so in a way, it's like a bit like a soundscape of bookshops across America or across those those four Absolutely. states anyway. And and we wanted it, we intentionally wanted it to be that, something that wasn't just about the songs, but was about the stories and the spaces in which you, you know, we were playing them in and the people within them. So you can hear all of that on the album and it's a very, very much a live album, but each song taken from a different bookshop chronologically along the tour. And if anybody is interested in the album, I put a link in the comments. And I'm going to see if I can get a couple copies to keep in the store to sell. Oh, I do. That would be really be nice. Cool. You could do that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, want to do another song or two? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we do? Uh, what do you want to do? Let's look at our look at our. Yeah, we could look at the album. We could look at the or album. That would be good. So we <laughs> went to be promoting this, right? So um, why don't we do um, could do Smog Over London? Could or, do. Or, or uh, we are the time? foxes. The fo- yeah, well, maybe the foxes. Could we do foxes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, Beth is going to go and grab the book while I turn oh, okay, over. Yeah. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. Oh, okay. good. Oh, good. <laughs> We're so unplanned uh, for this. Okay, so um, this... Watch while everything falls down. Yeah, so we're, after every lockdown book show, we put a few more books on the shelf, but we never really initiated the pile properly at the beginning. So you can see there it's a bit wonky and it could all go wrong. Okay, so this song uh, is inspired by this book here called Glow by Ned Bowman. Um, and it's a kind of like a crime thriller set in London. But when I picked this up, I looked at it and I was like, "Yes, this is a this is a song inspired by this is a book about psychedelic foxes." I was quite excited, but there aren't. It's not really, um, but that doesn't make it. Doesn't you know? There's still a niche for a psychedelic fox book, I think. But um, but it's kind of set in the real world, it's set in London, and there's there's kind of this kidnapping and someone trying to solve this mystery, and it's a really great book. Um, but I'm not going to tell you any more about that, except that. There are foxes in it, but they appear so fleetingly in the narrative that you, you're kind of wondering what's going on. Like, for example, uh, the main character is sat on the top of a London dub decker night bus chatting to someone. And then mid-sentence, it's referenced in the book that someone is, that there's a fox sat behind them on the seat looking out of the window. And it just goes back to the conversation that this guy is having. And you'll think, you as the reader are thinking, hang on, that's that's really weird. Does no one else think that's weird? What's going on? And then this happens a few more times in the book. So there's a fox in a bedroom and in a kitchen and just sort of going about their business. And so we wrote a song imagining that we're one of these foxes and trying to think, perhaps trying to work out what they were doing. Um, and in our heads, um, we thought maybe these foxes were providing a service. Um, they seem to be going to work. So we imagined that when all the people of the city get tired and they put their rubbish out for collection the next morning, all the foxes get together and they provide the service, which is to take said bags of rubbish and tear them open and scatter the contents over the road. And they do this for free. Um, they do this purely to make you happy and by the time the morning comes they'll be gone and uh, you won't even know it was these wonderful benevolent foxes that had done this job for you um so that's kind of the ricochet that uh, inspired this song um i just need to find the instruments that i'm playing and beth will uh, uh chat to you in the meantime hold on <laughs> um i will chat to you i'm about to chat to you yeah, about n- um i thought i thought it was over there is it not buried right. Over that side, I'm not actually sure. Uh, I have seen it <laughs> very <Yeah, it's> cool. <laughs> recently. <laughs> I thought it was down there. Do you want me to have a look? Well, anyway, Ned Bowman, um, who wrote this book, we, we've also written a couple of songs inspired by another one of his books, which is called The Teleportation Accident, which I thought was one of it's one of my favourite books, um, and. We wrote, yeah, we wrote a couple of songs inspired by that. And I haven't actually, I, I was, uh, I think Ben gave me Glow for Christmas or birthday before we got asked to write this song and I still haven't read Glow. <laughs> <laughs> and every time Ben talks about it, I'm like, right, I'm going to read it. Um, well, it's like another book next. that you've got 13 chairs that I've just not read the You end haven't, of. yeah, oh, you haven't it read. It's right in Kenny's side. Oh, yeah. So there it is. We found it. We found it. <laughs> la, 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 la. Um... Molly had a really nice experience uh, with one of her babysitters in New York where she went to the museum of, is it Moving Image? And she got to meet Big Big Bird. <laughs> um, she's quite a Sesame Street fan. In fact, she was watching a lot of the Journey to Ernie episodes <laughs> this morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yay. He's back. Okay, so this ukulele broke on tour and we got it fixed. Um, but uh, and this very kind gentleman in Taos, no, Santa, Santa Fe. Fe, 
quickly went and fixed it and he said take the tape off after a couple of days and it should be fine but we just really like the tape so um it stayed on still there. It's a stripy tiger uke okay so this song um I can oh sorry i didn't even it. find the uh, no oh we'll be right um this song is called we are the foxes <laughs> I have to come back every time so that I can just clap. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Kim. Michael says, impossible not to be smiling while listening to this. Oh, oh. thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Can you guys do one more song for us before we uh, close out for the night? Yeah. yeah. Do, you... do once for a time. Or... Once for a time or 13. Or 13, yes. yes. You if, if you want to do two, I'm okay with that. You want to just uh, you do what you want. Uh, I mean, the first lines is quite good because it gives people okay. a bit of a challenge. That's a bit it? of a challenge. All right, let's let's uh, okay. make a plan. <laughs> okay, so uh, this song is um, a song we wrote that is again not inspired by a book necessarily, but is uh, using the first lines of books. Um, so each line is a classic, potentially first line. And uh, it's your challenge to see if how many of them you can get. And it's quite fun on the tour um, putting this challenge to each audience and seeing which bookshop, um, uh, what, what, which bookshop got the most. Basically, um, the average score for a bookshop I'd say is three. Um, so let's see how you guys do. Uh, <laughs> post the comments up, and um, yeah, it's called Once Upon a Time. It was 
the worst of times Writing a song about first lines It was the age of wisdom, of foolishness It was the season of light, the season of dark Drawing the reader in right from the start It was the spring of hope, the winter of I only got one. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, Tale of Two Cities. Excellent. Well done. I have to say, we wouldn't have got any before we wrote the song. So yeah. anybody no, gets any. Is we've just... only read the first line. Right in our books. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys so much for doing this. And when you do eventually come back to the States, please come and visit us. Oh, we'd love to. Seriously. We'd love to. And thanks so much for, for our listening. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And if anyone, uh, uh, Friday night, Friday mm -hmm. night, tomorrow night, yeah, 8.30, yeah, yeah. 3.30 okay. your time. We think probably worth <laughs> checking. <laughs> yeah. If you miss yeah. it, you can find it again. I sell books, not math. Um, <laughs> I, put, I put a link in the comments if anybody's interested. So, yeah. And I caught you guys last week. I had it playing in the background. Um, oh, great. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had it on. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh, if you guys are interested in any of the Bookshop Band's albums, I put a link in the comments. Um, I personally own a few of them, so I highly recommend them, and I'll see if I can put some in the store, too. Um, thanks, Thank guys. You. Have a good night. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. You too. Bye, Take everybody. Care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>